Most Vibe coders hit a wall when they need a backend. And I've got a lot of comments from you guys asking for help specifically with building backends. So I found a cheat code that bridges that gap. While everyone else is messing around with API endpoints and server configurations, you're going to be dragging and dropping your way to glory. So what am I talking about exactly? I'm going to show you how to prototype a backend for your app without coding. Now we're going to go through three steps in getting this thing set up. I'm going to talk about what it is, the exact implementation, and why it might change how you approach prototyping your MVPs. So this video is for builders who want quick results and not necessarily computer science degrees. Because of the difference between shipping actual MVPs in days instead of weeks or months. So by the end, you're gonna have a simple functioning AI agent without having to write a single line of backend code. So let's get into it. So if you're somewhat new to coding or AI driven coding, backend development can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Why is that? Because you don't get a lot of great visual feedback when you make changes. But the thing is, the back end of your application is really the workhorse that drives the core business logic. And so this becomes a big problem because you accept all your way through major architectural decisions without thinking about it, and you back yourself into a corner which kills your app. So you're left with cores errors, internal server errors, configuration issues that you don't understand, and general debugging hell. And ain't nobody got time for that. So if you're a vibe coder without extensive coding experience, you can get lost in the sauce pretty easily. So here we are inside of a tool called N8N, which you've probably heard of, especially if you were in that AI automation sphere of the internet. And we've got this really simple backend agent already built for us. And by the way, if you want access to this so that you can go in and mess around with it and customize it for yourself, I will have a link to this in the description of the video. So if you're unfamiliar with N8N, it's a drag and drop tool that allows you to connect these like backend-ish tools to whatever it is that you are doing. So a lot of use cases for this in like general automation, which again is where you tend to see most of this, but it can also be super helpful to prototype a backend for your application because it supports a lot of these tools out of the box and it's very easy to configure them. So we can easily use tools like Gemini's models, Anthropics models, interact with vector databases like Pinecone, insert or retrieve data from a database using Supabase. And there are literally hundreds of other things that we can interact with inside of this tool. Now, one of the things that is supported inside of NNN is this idea of an AI agent node. And so the way that this thing works is that we can connect a chat model provider. So for example, in this case, using OpenAI's O3, we can connect some basic memory to it, and then we can give it any number of tools. So in this basic example, I have this agent, which has access to two separate tools. The first one is perplexity, right? So we can use perplexity to go research a topic. And the second one, which is meaningful to note, is that with N8N, you can connect MCP servers as well. And so here I am connecting to the Context 7 MCP, which pulls up-to-date development documentation for most major frameworks or libraries. And so again, I can give this agent access to any number of these tools. And so the app that we're going to be working on here, we've looked at it a few times on this channel, is called Prompt Wallet. And so basically I want to add in this functionality where I can take a prompt and I can have an AI actually improve that prompt. And so this thing is not yet connected to this N8N thing we've built out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go copy one of these prompts and we're going to go paste it into N8N so you can see what it looks like. And so what we did is we came over here and the thing that's cool is that we can trigger this whole entire workflow based on a simple chat message to kind of prototype this thing out. And so I am going to, again, just paste over this prompt and give it a little bit of direction and say, I want you to research the topic and then improve the prompt. And so the reason that N8N is nice is we can see a really nice visual of what's going on. So as soon as this thing kicks off, it goes, it builds out a research plan. It knows that it needs to research the topic. And so it's hitting this perplexity node, generating research about UI design principles and best practices. It's sending it back to OpenAI. And depending on the complexity of the task, 
this thing can bounce around and use dozens of different tools to solve this problem, right? And now we can see it took that original prompt that we had and it made it a lot more specific, right? So it kept that like a aesthetics piece. Um, it definitely dialed it in a little bit and then it created sections for how to handle interactivity, um, accessibility, and so on. So how does this thing work? Inside of this AI agent in N8N, we've given it a basic definition, right? Some basic instructions. We're saying these are the tools that you have access to. This is generally your decision-making framework that you follow. If you have coding questions, you wanna pull relevant documentation. If you are being asked to research a topic, you wanna to use that perplexity node that we had, right? So we're just going through and we're saying, these are the different tools that you have access to and this is what they do. And then we are passing in what the user's question was, which again, the reason this is nice is this is all drag and drop. So I can literally just drag this node over here and drop it in and that's gonna be passed through to the agent. So here we define how the agent operates and what its instructions are. Then we define the specific model it's going to use. In this case, it's using O3. We give it a basic memory so that it can keep memory of the chat that's going on back and forth and kind of what we're talking about. And then we've just given it two basic tools. So again, it uses perplexity to research topics. And the thing that's kind of nice about what N8N does is it's allowing our AI model to actually determine what messages are going to be sent through to perplexity in this case to actually research this thing. So I don't have to give it a static prompt that it uses every time. It's going to define that dynamically when this thing runs based on the agent. So pretty cool. We do the same thing for connecting this MCP server, context seven. So if it needs to go out and find documentation for like Tailwind CSS, for example, it can do that. And so if we wanted to really beef this thing up, we could go through and add, again, tons of these different tools that it has access to. But for right now, we're going to keep it simple. Now, the only problem right now is that this is just triggering on a chat, right? So we need some way to actually connect this into our project. I need a way to get all of this data into this N8N workflow. So that is what we are going to work on next. So let's zoom out for a second to a thousand foot view. Backend development is very important because it's typically the logic powerhouse that really drives the app. So what we're doing here is we're prototyping a basic MVP of what that backend might look like and how it might function so that we can hook it into our front end and get immediate feedback on how it works whether or not it's like kind of meeting our expectations and so on. And we're doing that with simple drag and drop tools that are very easy that anybody can use. The ultimate plan here is that later on in time, after you have proof of concept, you would come back and beef this thing up into an actual backend. So we're not avoiding that backend development here. We're choosing strategic abstractions so that we can get an MVP up and running quickly, which again, lets us get real user feedback and start testing and iterating 10 times faster. But we still need a front end for it. So let's go build that out quickly. So again, we have our app here called Prompt Wallet. And for me, it solves a really big problem of always having prompts all over the place. Some of them I use in Gemini. Some of them I only use in Claude. Some of them I only use in OpenAI. All over the place. I'm changing them all of the time and testing with them and experimenting with them and using different versions and testing this and testing that. And it's actually kind of difficult to track what changes worked and why they worked, right? Like stuff like that. And so I wanted to create this thing for myself really so that I could have a centralized repository of all of these things. Now, one of the features I want to add to this is the ability to improve my prompts with an agent that can reason about the subject and do research and generally use intelligence to like actually improve this thing. Now we could build this type of like agentic improver in like Python or Node.js, but then we wouldn't have this awesome video showing you how to build an MVP with no code. So I basically want to have just a button right here that says, hey, enhance this thing with AI. Then the user can maybe give a little bit of feedback about what they want specifically. And it passes this content plus that prompt from the user over to that N8N workflow we built and then gets the response back and saves this thing. That's the workflow that I'm looking to kind of prototype right now. So we are inside of Claude code and it's going to be pretty simple. I need you to build a basic button inside of prompt ID that says AI enhance. When clicked, it prompts the user for specific feedback that they might have. And then it sends the prompt plus the feedback 
through to this endpoint, which is our N8N endpoint, and it should send the prompt and the query as the two like pieces of that body. So it should send a value called prompt and a value called query and receives back a response called new prompt. So this is what I'm gonna ask it to go build. All right, guys, so this thing just finished running and now we can see we have this little AI enhance button up here. So if I were to click on this, nice little modal pops up and so we could come in here and say, research to add more design best practices as of September, 2025, right? And so now what we can do is we can hop back over really quickly to our N8N and we have this webhook node. So if I were to click listen for test event, right? This is the URL that we gave it to send to. And I come through here now and I actually hit this enhance button and we pop back. We're gonna see that it actually received that message, right? And it has the prompt and the query just like we asked it to. So we are now able to send data from our app over into N8N. And so the only problem is that this isn't connected yet, right? Because this is coming in through a webhook when previously we're, we were using this little chat piece inside of N8N. So now we have a brain without a body and a body without a brain. So let's future paste those hater Frankenstein vibe coder comments and bring our creation to life. So time for the moment of truth because most tutorials don't actually get to the point of connecting the things together and showing you what the outputs really look like. So first things first, inside of N8N, what do we have? So this is that URL that we used when we coded that endpoint in our app to begin with. And then we choose this option to respond to a webhook node, okay? And what that is, is once this thing is fully done processing and doing what it's gonna do, it's gonna respond back to that original request that was made with whatever we tell it to respond with here. And like we mentioned earlier, we told it to expect that it's gonna receive new prompt as an object, right? And that's gonna have the actual new prompt in it. And so what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, take that output that we get and send it through in the request. So what we can do now is we can say execute workflow. Now it's waiting for us to call this test URL. So we can hop back over here and we can ask it to enhance. We can paste in what we want to do. We want to infuse more design best practices into this prompt. We can say enhance. And now instead of failing immediately, we can see that it is waiting. Now this is obviously not the most ideal scenario because we wouldn't want the user just sitting here waiting for 30, 45 seconds for this thing to process. But again, we're just proofing this thing out and prototyping. So this thing is going through, it did its research. Now it's formulating its response. And what we should see is that this should process and save a new copy of our prompt in just a second. And boom, there it is. And so now if we look at this thing, we can see it added a lot in. So if we were to go down, for example, and look at our like Git viewer, which we made in our last video, to view the version history, we can see exactly what was changed. So as we start scrolling down, we can see it added this piece about eco-conscious UI, dark mode energy savings, mobile first responsiveness. And then we get this entire section on project specification guidelines. So zero friction onboarding, AI powered personalization, bottom sheet navigation, micro interactions, right? So we're getting all of this extra data in here that we can use. And now we have this up-to-date version of this prompt. So again, if you want this N8N file so that you can just at least take this structure of the you know, input webhook and the output response and then come in here and plug in all your own tools and prototype your own thing, I will have a link to this for free in the school group in the description below the video. And I would actually like to know if you guys get in there and do something like this and you use it, I would like to see what you built because I, I really enjoy this stuff and I like seeing what people build with the techniques and tools that I show you guys. So if you do build out something cool based on this, please drop a comment on this video or a future video and just let me know because I, again, I really do like checking that stuff out. So this webhook based approach is how most major APIs work, right? If you've ever done an integration with Stripe or with Twilio or with countless other tools, they have a similar approach where your app just sends a request to an endpoint and then receives that response. And so you're offloading all of the infrastructure and processing of what building out a payment processor would look like to Stripe's API. So this is a great approach to rapidly prototyping a backend for your app. So now that you have that backend, you can choose to migrate it into production code whenever 
you want or never if the approach that you have scales for what you're doing. Depends how big of an app you really are intending on building, I suppose. So no code backend tools are not replacing modern developers, but they are creating a new breed of builders that can rapidly prototype and get to value quickly, AKA people that ship first and optimize later. So again, if you want that N8N template from the video, it's in the school group below. I also put all of the files and prompts and agent definitions and everything from my YouTube in that group. So if you want any of those frameworks, go check out the school group below. We'll be getting to more practical tutorials like this in upcoming videos. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you want to see more practical stuff like this. That is it for this video. I will see you in the next one.